What's going on in WandaVision? If you're confused like I was, we've got all your answers here today on the Neon Fish Podcast. Welcome to the Neon Fish Podcast. Thank you for being here, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your favorite podcast app. Before we get to interview with our uh, guest here today, and we're going to talk about WandaVision, um, I want to just clear something up for you, for those of you who are here expecting to hear the Christian Arts and Entertainment Podcast. You are in the right place. We have decided to sort of rebrand for season two to better reflect the original vision of what the podcast was all about. So we are going to be talking about the same types of topics, uh, entertainment, arts, fandom, faith, and all the things in between. Uh, And today for our first episode of season two, we're going to be talking WandaVision uh, with my special guest, Tim Frankovich. Thank you, Tim, for joining me on this podcast and uh, coming to talk to us about WandaVision and the comic books surrounding all of that. We're glad you're here. Thanks a lot. So uh, as we get started, first of all, when I, when I first watched the first episode of WandaVision, my wife and I just looked at each other and we didn't know what we were watching. Uh, we, we were completely confused and I had to actually go and look some stuff up and I realized that people who are fans of the comic books, none of that was a surprise. Uh, it, was, it was probably pretty expected and, and very enjoyable to watch. And the reason is um, what I found out was that there is a power that Wanda has that's not really addressed much in the films. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, well, her powers have changed many times through the years in the comic books, uh, depending on who's writing it, you know, because she started out um, as a villain and then became an Avenger. And um, originally her powers were, she threw what they called hex bolts, you know, because that, that was where the name came from. She's the Scarlet Witch because she throws hexes, you know, and they were very poorly defined um they affected probability so they would do whatever you know the comic book writer wanted them to do you know blow something up or you know make something malfunction or just you know anything like that until um other writers decided hey you know we call her the scarlet witch so let's have her actually learn some real magic and so she trained with this one sorceress uh, named Agatha Harkness who trained her in that. And that's a character that many fans think that Agnes in WandaVision actually is that character. Well, let's, let's stop right there before we go any further. And let me just address to anybody who's listening uh, or, or watching on YouTube that there will be spoilers that uh, as, at least through the first four episodes of WandaVision, if you're watching this after the fact, we're not going to go beyond the first four episodes of the TV show. But because we're talking about the source material from the comic books, we could p- be potentially spoiling the entire show from beginning to end. We don't know yet, but we're going to be talking the source material. So if, if you don't care about hearing the, the source material or you've already seen the first four episodes, go ahead, keep watching, but be warned we are going to be talking some spoilers in regards to that. So uh, the first uh, potential spoiler that you yeah. just mentioned is that Agnes in the show might possibly be uh, the uh, witch that Wanda trained with in the comic books. Is that correct? Yeah. And so, you know, later on, new writers came along and said, decided that, you know, she was, she was a mutant who manipulates energy But, you know, when she was born, the elder god, Cthon, god of chaos, you know, messed with her at birth so that she would be able to manipulate his magic so that he could come back to Earth someday, which, 
you know, set up a whole storyline that didn't go anywhere. But, you know, the, uh, so right. it, was, you know, it was called chaos magic, you know, okay. so it would do all kinds of crazy things. And she started learning more spells where she could manipulate things more and more. And, it, but again, it was still basically, she could do whatever the writers wanted her to do. Uh, right. You know, whatever was convenient for the plot. Right. So there's this one though specific ability that she developed uh, to manipulate reality. And, and this is something they didn't really haven't really touched on in the movies, but could be uh, very uh, crucial to WandaVision at this moment. Right. Would you explain a little bit more of that uh, ability? Yeah, There was a big story called house of them. Um, and it was called that because for most of her history, uh, Wanda and her brother Quicksilver were the children of Magneto, who I um, mean, big X Men villain. Right. Uh, you've seen any of the X Men movies? You've seen him. Um. So she, at this point in the storyline, somehow develops reality altering powers, which seem to come out of nowhere and be a huge increase in her power base because she basically ends up altering the entire world to fit um, uh, various people's dreams of what they wanted to happen. And that all ties in with the two children, the twin brothers, twin boys that she had or didn't. Right. <laughs> Which is another complicated story. But in the house of M one, she, she recreates the world to match different people's ideas of what would be great. Her father, Magneto, basically becomes the ruler of the entire world. And everything is great for certain people. And then some of the heroes remember what's going, remember the previous world and end up getting things changed back eventually. At which point she kind of disappears for a long time, loses her memory and is off somewhere else for a long time because after all of that, the writers didn't know how in the world they could possibly bring her back as a hero, you know, be after, be after doing all that. Right. Um, eventually they came up with the idea that her powers really can't do that, but she was manipulated and assisted by Dr. Doom, who is the one behind all of that eventually. So, and yeah. incidentally is a rumored potential big bad villain for the next phase of Marvel. Right. Yeah. See there, there, when you get to this, the WandaVision story, there are multiple candidates for if, you know, right now, the way it seems to be setting it up, you know, the characters that are in the story seem to be thinking that it's Wanda herself that is doing all of this. But in, in most of these storylines that it's, that, that it's the show is drawing from, she's been manipulated by other people. Right. Which could be an ultimate twist at the end of the, end of the series. So after episode four, uh, they're, they're leading us to believe that Wanda has created an alternate reality uh, with the purpose of bringing vision back from the dead and um, potentially everybody in the town they're, they're missing people. They're real people, at least from what we, we've seen so far, might also be dead people as well. We haven't gotten that information yet in the show. Um, so sort of aside, I know you told me you haven't really read the, um, the, the, the Vision storyline by, um, um, who was it? Uh, Tom King. I think it's Tom it. King. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but basically all I know about that is that vision wanted to be more human. And so he settled down the suburbs and started a family and whatnot, tried to live a normal life. And, and so we see some of that coming into play with them being in the, the stereotypical yeah. suburb type family situation that yeah. uh, Wanda supposedly borrowed, is created at the moment. Yeah. They haven't borrowed stories from it, but the, the, the vibe, the, the concept, you know, all that, they've kind of borrowed from that series from what I can tell. You know, but the whole the thing about her children is what's can could be very very weird in the end. <laughs> right. Uh, so tell 
tell us a little bit about what the children, what are they in the comic books? How, how do they come about? What's the deal with the children from the comic perspective? Yeah, in the comic books, and this was way back, you know, um, I'm thinking 70s and 80s when the storyline really evolved, evolved, that she was, she became married to the Vision, in, you know, in the, as they were Avengers. And then she conceived and had these two twin boys. And, you know, everyone's like, how in the world does an android have children? And basically right. the explanation was, it's magic. <laughs> she did right. it herself. It Wanda did her thing. Yeah. So that she had these two baby boys and everything um, seemed happy. And then crazy stuff ended up happening. And in the end, they weren't actually real. They were, um, they were actually shards of the soul of Mephisto, who is kind of the Marvel universe's devil, but not, the devil he's like a devil you know it's it's confusing but <laughs> you know they he had been blown apart by another hero previously in another story and his souls had been scattered into pieces and when she worked her magic to create the babies she pulled in two pieces of his soul okay and so and, and so, came back. what what how did she react when she found out they weren't real uh, she kind of lost her mind for a while you know, and that was what's kind of confusing is that she lost her mind at that point, but then got better. But then later on loses her mind again over the whole same issue, which is what sparks the House of M storyline. So it wasn't, it was like somebody came along years later and decided there should be more consequences for that. And that's when they came up with the House of M story. But it would have made more sense if it had happened right away. <laughs> All right. So uh, that to say that the twins could be huge towards the end of this series, of uh, this season of WandaVision in regards to how Wanda is going to react as, upon re-entering the world. Um, when she finds out her twins are completely made up, Yeah, uh, could be potentially devastating. Yeah. Now in the comics, they do come back which is very confusing. Somehow, some way, they, they're, they actually did have real souls, people somehow, and those souls got brought back into someone else, into two other bodies and came back as children. And okay, grew so... Up and became, grew up and became heroes themselves, so... Right, and then we, so we don't know what's going... These two children, um, are these the first iteration of Wanda's children or the second iteration um let's talk a little bit about quicksilver now you mentioned uh quicksilver of course is uh, wanda's twin brother and um by some glitch in the copyright issues between fox and marvel somehow they were both able to create a version of quicksilver and put them in movies so we see the quicksilver that, w- that came in with the uh, uh new class of x-men movies um was indeed Magneto's son mm-hmm. uh, and is, is still still alive. Uh, the Quicksilver in the Marvel movies uh, died at the hands of Ultron uh, in the age of Ultron. Now that we have this merger going on, of course, there's been rumors that they're going to try to bring Quicksilver back. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but I ran across, apparently, there has been a leak for one of the upcoming episodes of WandaVision. And it's very much about Quicksilver coming back. So what about Quicksilver in the comic books? How how much of what we've seen in the movies came about during the comic books and what could we potentially expect in regards to House of M when it comes to Quicksilver? Yeah, I mean, he obviously hasn't been used much in in the movies, you know, Age of Ultron was it for the Marvel Universe, and he had, you know, in the X-Men book movies, he had, you know, one cool scene in each one where he gets to run really fast. Right. But, um, as far as character, they haven't done much with him. In the comics, he's always been um, very arrogant, very um, 
annoyed with people all of the time. Um, I think the best explanation of that once was um, uh, the, the writer Peter David had him explaining to a therapist once, do you get annoyed when you're standing in line, in a very slow moving line for something like at the DMV? That's what my entire life is like. <laughs> and that's why he's annoyed all the time. Um, but in the House of M storyline, he was kind of the one who prompted it because he was with the Avengers and they were discussing, you know, we have to stop Wanda before she does anything because she's lost her mind. And she's his sister. He's always, always been super loyal to his sister and wants to protect her and everything. And he's the one who basically prompted her and encouraged her to warp reality. So I, I don't see how that could play into effect on WandaVision, but well, just, and they've already the, uh, episode three, the, he was brought up, right? It sort of prompted her reaction to, to get rid of, of Rambo. Um, that of course that was a season four thing revelation that of who, um, who she was. But in the in the leaked information, there was an image of Quicksilver, and this is this is what's really kind of intriguing. The image looked like the Fox Quicksilver, yeah. not the Quicksilver that died in Zakovia. Yeah, I saw one um, one post about a cast list that included that particular actor in it. So and it would be the same actor. I, yeah. So I don't know if I don't, it's not listed that way on IMDb yet, but you know, they don't always post things there. So we don't know yet. <laughs> so if the Quicksilver thing, was a, a, a catalyst in house of M, mm-hmm. then we might could expect Quicksilver to have, have a very important role in trying to bring Wanda out of this. I think it's important. It's a very important factor in it because um, one of the things that I've noticed so the last couple episodes, Vision's been running around with super speed. He's never had that power before. Oh. All kinds of other powers, but he's never had super speed before. That's Quicksilver's thing. So right. it's, it's interesting that in this altered reality, Wanda, ha- if Wanda is behind all of it, she's given that power to Vision as well. Right. So based on what you know, as we start to come down to our last few minutes here um, from the comics, what do you expect the finale of WandaVision to kind of look like? It's really hard. Like I said, there could be any number of villains involved in it. I've, you know, I've seen, like you mentioned, you, but you do expect somebody else is behind. I think there's somebody else involved manipulating her. Um, I don't think that the, MCU people would go so far as to have the whole thing just be on her unless they're setting her up to be, you know, the super big villain (laughs) going on, which I think would make a lot of people angry. But she, I think she's being manipulated to some degree, you know, and who's doing that is the big question, whether it's Dr. Doom or Mephisto or even I've even seen one reasonable theory that it's the shards of Ultron coming back, you know? So we, we have no idea what that will be, but it seems to be setting things up to play into the next Dr. Strange movie. Uh, I see. Which so, she's already um, listed as being part of that cast. So. Right. One more question. Why is sword doing uh, involved and not shield? Um, that's a good question. Uh, Sword in the comics was an offshoot of S.H.I.E.L.D. created to deal with extraterrestrial stuff. You know, they had an orbiting base station to to watch out for alien threats to Earth and things like that. In, um, you know, the, the, the acronym in the comics was Sentient World Observation and in the episode we just saw WandaVision, they revealed it to be sentient weapon organizations. So, and they talked about, you know, clearly that they did have something to do with extraterrestrial stuff. Right. Um, so maybe they suspect there's a, there's an alien involvement here. I don't really know. So it's kind of, it seems kind of an odd choice actually. Yeah. Right. 
All right. Well, Tim, thank you so much. Tim Frankovich, author and comic book enthusiast. Tell us a little bit about your books, Tim. Okay. Um, I write epic fantasy. Uh, I have a series called Heart of Fire, which is, um, you know, the easiest explanation to people is that it's, you know, like Lord of the Rings. It's, it's uh, set in an alternate different world with different types of things going on, magic and magical races and things like that. Um, it ultimately though, it's, it's a world where someone decided ancient times to enforce the laws through magic. So there is, there is zero tolerance for crime. So, you know, it ends up being an exploration of the ideas of law versus grace because there is no grace or mercy in this world unless things change. Uh, the other series that I've just started is a, uh, a YA, more science fantasy type series where the, the known world is ruled by a group of um, dragons that have ruled for a thousand years, but people are starting to rise up against them. But there's a strange mixture of technology and magic in that. Excellent. Where can people go to find out more about you and your books? You can check my website, timfrankovich.com. I'm also on Facebook. And, of course, you can buy everything at Amazon or other booksellers online. Okay. All right. Well, all that information will be in the description section on YouTube and on your podcast. Uh, Thank you once again, Tim, for joining us and clearing up some of this WandaVision stuff that that we've been seeing and explaining the comic books to us. Uh, Thank you all for watching on YouTube. Thank you for listening on your favorite podcast app. And we'll see you next time on the Neon Fish Podcast. Yeah.